the topic we're talking about today is prime lenses specifically for street photography so if you're coming from a kit lens or standard zoom that sort of thing that come with your camera at some point if you're getting into photography getting into street photography quite seriously it's inevitable you'll start thinking about what prime lens is going to suit you quite a long video this one so let's get into it as quick as possible um with this is the 18 to 55 kit lens from fujifilm a lot of you guys follow the channel that are fujifilm shooters will recognize this lens it might might be this one you're coming from so if you're uh, if you've got any experience with your street photography have a look and see where your focal length is it's actually a good idea not to zoom at all with these lenses and literally just use them as they are at either 18 or 23 and just just leave it there really uh, but if you go through your photographs the ones that you particularly happy with and see what focal focal length you've been using and um, whether or not you're one of these people that zoom in and out all the time or what um, and just find out where that's a good indication as to where your street photography wants to be the other idea is i've got loads of street photography books over it so if you haven't got any street photography books that is a really really good place to start and you can see all the loads of them over there um so going through street photography books and actually finding finding out what sort of street photography it is you're trying to achieve that is super important it's the with without knowing what sort of street photography you're trying to achieve uh, you're never going to know what lens is going to suit you okay and you'll end up just buying them all and not having a clue which one to master so yeah let's get into it first one we've got is the um we're talking fujifilm lenses specifically but obviously these equate full frame and, and we're going to be talking about the full frame focal length okay just to make it universal across the board so it doesn't matter if you've got a sony a leica uh, look at you um olympus it doesn't matter what nikon doesn't matter what camera you're shooting with we'll talk about the full frame equivalent just to make it easy for everybody so we've got the 28 mil the 35 mil the nifty 50 and then the 85 mil first things first is the uh the 18 mil this is a 1.4 prime lens. It doesn't need to be a 1.4 prime lens for street photography. I can't stress that enough. And in actual fact, this lens, as much as it's amazing, and I haven't had it long, I've only had it probably a month, maybe just more, um, I bought it specifically for my very, very low light events that I, that I photograph quite a lot, extremely low light events. Um, and it's a godsend for that. But for street photography, they do an F2. So just bear that in mind. It's a lot smaller and a lot lighter. This is only 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 an advantage over that one for weather for autofocus, you know, and for the resolution of, of the X-T5, which is on now. But the 28mm field of view is a what I would call a creative lens. It's very, very different for what the, the human eye sees. <clears throat> so um, the human eye sees about 40 mil. Now, most people say it's 50 mil, but I actually think it's a bit wider than that. I think it's 40 mil. So the human eye singularly, <laughs> without your peripheral vision, as I call it, is 40 mil. So this is wider than that. Um, and because it's wider, you get things like distortion. If you get up close to something, um, it pushes everything away. So backgrounds, as soon as you take a photograph of this, backgrounds look further than they are. Um, now, the good thing about this lens, this focal length of 28 mil, is the depth of field is massive. So what's sharp, is absolutely huge even on small apertures like f2.8 if i was to put this on f2.8 i could still zone focus with this quite comfortably at 2.8 i'd still get lots of depth of field i could focus at two meters i could focus at infinity and most of the scene would be sharp because of the depth of field it's a bit like why why gopros don't need to focus because they're a very very small sensor like the xt5 is and um they've got 2.8 wide angle lenses so they don't need to focus the same sort of principle almost now, because of that, the drawback is that you've got to... It, I did a, vi a video with this the other day, and um, I'll put a link wherever that goes up there. And I couldn't believe how much you've got to run around with the 28mm. It is a very energetic lens. When you get... Um, it's great for what I wanted the video was about one meter challenge. So this lens is absolutely perfect for the one meter challenge because of the depth of field we've just mentioned. But how much running around this lens requires to actually to fill your frame is ridiculous so it's quite it's, i wouldn't say it's a beginner lens it takes unless you just want to get massive scenes in which case this is fantastic if you travel lens or something like that it's fantastic um really really wide vistas that sort of thing um but for street photography if you're trying to fill the frame with what's important in the in the shot this is quite a challenge because it means you've got to get really close a lot closer than you would with some of the other lenses okay so this is quite this requires quite a bit of confidence in that respect if you're if you're 
happy just to walk past people really quite close, quite close proximity, have it on silent shutter or something like that, 20 frames a second, just walk past, focus at a meter, focus at two meters, just, 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 you know, it, it can be really, really good for that because it's very forgiving. You've got a massive field of view with this lens. Like the GoPro is, it gets everything in. Um, and if you've got the crop ability like you have with the X-T5 with the 40 megapixel sensor, it could be the way to go. When I tried the Leica Q2 monochrome a couple of months ago, fell in love with the focal length, more so because of the resolution and the crop ability, but the focal length really was an enjoyable focal length. Um, but with a 28 mil, you've got to be careful with things like um, distortion, vertical lines, um, get um, portraits of people. Really not a good idea to do portraits of people with a 28 mil lens because when you show them their photograph, if you're too close, they're gonna have like really round faces and it's not it's not very complimentary. So if you're thinking about doing street photography portraits, wouldn't recommend the 28 mil at all. Or definitely keep um, another lens in the bag for portraits. Uh, but if you're into layered photographs, so my friend Eduardo Ortiz is a phenomenal photographer, absolutely world class. Is one of my I'm very, very envious of his talent. Now he uses an 18mm f2 on his X-Pro2. I'll link to his YouTube channel up there as well. Um, now his layered shots are all done on an 18mm f2. Now if you're into layering, this is the lens to get, the 18mm f2 or this one. Absolutely game changing. It really, really is nice for layered, having depth to an image. Also, if you want to get close to fight scenes or to protests where you want to feel really immersed in the in the in the image when you want to feel like you're part of the photograph the 18 um full frame 28 field of view gets you part of the action when you're looking at photographs that were taken with a 28 mil lens you really do feel part of the action you you feel like you're there you feel immersed because the photographers had to get close also mark fernley um if you don't follow mark fernley put a link to his YouTube and not YouTube, Instagram up there. Phenomenal, phenomenal uh, architectural, uh, fine art-ish street photographer. Likes to find really, really amazing scenes. Use emphasize leading lines, emphasize tone, um, getting as much as possible. Um, look, for, yeah, look for lines and, and simplistic compositions. Now, this is a fantastic lens for that. You probably want to zoom, really, but this is a fantastic prime lens for that because you can obviously emphasize leading lines, get low, use foreground interest, that sort of thing. So it's a really, really good lens for that. Um, going wide, getting as much in as possible and obviously getting a lot of, of focus from, from, you could leave this at infinity at f8, f5.6 and not need to focus. It's, it's fantastic for that. Next on the list, we have the 35 mil field of view. So this is the Fujifilm X100V, probably my all time favorite camera, if I'm honest with you, it, it is incredible, but we're talking about the lens that's on it. So any 35 mil lens gives you the same field of view, obviously, as this. So it's, it's literally that bit we're talking about. We're not talking about the camera as such, but this lens for me is uh, the everything lens. I'd call this the everything lens. For 20 years, I've been photographing weddings and events, and most of the weddings and events, I could probably photograph the whole thing on a 35 mil. I've not really done many events where I've got there and thought, I need wider, or I wish I had wider. Uh, the, the 35 mil has pretty much done everything. Um, now for street photography, it's incredible because it's um, probably where I would say the best beginner prime lens is. It really will help you if you're a beginner street photographer, and you don't know where you are, it, it will help you find out whether or not you need to get closer, you want to get wider. The 35 mil is the lens to start with because it, you can you can learn everything about street photography. You can discover who you are as a street photographer. With the 35 mil, you can do layered shots, you can do zone focus, you can do portraits with it, you can do environmental portraits. 35 mil with portraits, you've still got to be careful. You can't go too close with portraits, but it is the everything lens. It really does everything. Um, I like it because I like to zone focus because I don't trust Fujifilm for autofocus, especially not autofocus continuous. But again, I can focus this at two meters, I can focus at infinity, 5.6, f8, that sort of thing. And I never have to worry about missing, missing focus. It's just the way I like to shoot. So if you're a zone focuser, give the 35 mil a go, or if you're thinking about zone focusing, 35 mil is the right balance. It's a touch wider than the human eye as well. So you can you, it's probably the easiest lens to master as far as getting used to what the camera will see. Because if I'm looking at you now, I'm, I'm talking to a tripod, but if I'm talking to you now and I do that, it's pretty much exactly what I'm seeing 
as I'm sat here. So I could put my feet without even, even, even if I didn't have a camera with me, I can put my feet where the picture would need to be taken and go three, two, one, now. That is when the photograph, where the photograph would be taken. And it, as soon as I do, do that with my camera, if I had it with me, it would be exactly the same. I would get a little bit of forgiveness on the sides, but it's pretty much exactly what my profiterole vision would give me. So I really, really love it for that. Um, you don't get any surprises. It, you don't get any problems with um, vertical lines. I could shoot property with this if I wanted to shoot a commercial shoot, which I did the other day. I feel confident that even if I, though I was on a zoom lens at the time, I can put the zoom lens at 35 mil and all my vertical lines in the property are gonna be fine. So things like that are really, really important. Um, I didn't mention before on the 28 mil, you don't get bokeh. So if you're, a, if you're one of these people that wants to be obsessed with background blur, a 28 mil isn't the lens for that. You start to get it on a full frame 35 mil. You don't get it on a, on a crop center um, 35 mil, but you start to get it on a full frame 35 mil. But again, if you're obsessed with background blur, the 35 mil isn't probably the lens I'd go for. Um, but it is the it is the the ever the everything shooter. It's the everything. Likewise, if you're an introvert, I think the 35 mil is a really really good starting point because you haven't got to get too close to people. You, to fill the frame with the with the 28 mil, we had to make an effort. We had to run over and pretty much get in the people's face. Um, Gary Winogram was quite quite famous for the 28 mil field of view because he was quite he was quite confident in, in putting on this act that he could just sort of go in people's faces and pretend to be an idiot sort of thing. You don't need to do that with a 35 mil because you can you you've got that. Um, that safe distance where your feet would be is where the photograph would need to be. So it's a, it's a safe, if you're an introvert, it's a safe focal length to, to start with, if that makes sense. The only thing I would say the 28 has over this one is if you're a hip shooter, the hip shooter's pa uh, perfect lens is a 28 mil. So by that, if you wanted to walk around and just have the camera here and just go da 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 da, -da or have it even lower, the 28 mil is absolutely perfect for that. I don't feel that I can hip focus with a 35 mil. I feel like the the room for error is just too small. So even though you can zone focus at two meters and actually get the depth of field, I don't feel that um, I don't feel that it's wide enough at 35 mil. So 28 is the one for hip focusing if that's if that's going to suit your um, your style of photography. Hello, future Gareth here. How are we doing? Hope you're enjoying the video. And if it's for any use to you whatsoever, if you're learning anything, please do consider subscribing to F8 Magazine. It's the only way I can continue making these videos. And going forward in this year, from January 2024, where we are now, I'm actually promising myself to make an awful lot more content. So do uh, subscribe if you haven't done. Look forward to that. I want to talk to you about two images from the magazine. This is, again, issue three. Um, I did mention in a previous video that I've lost the hard drive. I've had the hard drive back and sadly it doesn't look like I've got any of my images back from my, my street and landscape photography so do back up your images if you haven't done already learn from my mistake um, hopefully I will eventually be able to get them back though so I'm not going to cry just yet so two images I want to talk to you about the first one is this one now this image um, I, t I took in Margate with with a couple of friends the light was passing so f um, so f frequently so so quickly that I didn't actually anticipate the shot until I'd walked around the corner and realized what might happen if I waited for the light so I bombed it back and took the shot now the reason that I was drawn to this photograph in the first place was actually because of an influence of, of one of my books that I've been studying so if you're not into studying street photography books just yet it's, a, it's really really important because if it wasn't for the influence of um, I can't remember the name of the artist, a 50s or 60s street photographer that somebody actually commented saying this photograph look, reminded them of. That was the influence and that was what was going on in my head. If if so-and-so would have seen that photograph, he would have taken it. So I run around, back around the block to get this shot and I'm really glad I did it because with the editing and all the subtle tones and everything, it came out really, really nice. The second image I want to talk to you about is this one. Um, now, I was struggling for images. Um, I, I kind of if I haven't taken a photograph in a while that I like, it really it really upsets me. So I was in Tenby, a fishing town near where we live, with the missus and the kids and stuff. And I said to them, look, just give me an hour. I've got to try and take a photograph. Because I just didn't feel like I've achieved anything for so long. I didn't want to take the, the, the lady whose knee this belonged to. Um, I didn't want to take the obvious portrait shot. She did look very photogenic, but it was just too easy just to go up to her and, and get it standing nice. Like, I didn't want to do that. 
and I really like the tattoos. And I just wanted to think outside the box a little bit. And then I, I started talking to her about the tattoos. I took this photograph, showed it. I said, can, can I take a picture of your knee? Purely because the cat on your knee is actually poking its head through the jeans. So uh, the lady was really, really sort of surprised. Didn't realise it was, you know, that th that was what was happening. So I said, look, I'll take a photo of your knee. I'll show you. <laughs> if you want me to delete it, I will. So I took the picture, showed her the picture. And she was actually um, really overwhelmed. Like, she's like, flipping it. That's incredible. I didn't think for a minute that was what was happening. So she was really, really pleased that I'd taken the photograph. And it was one of those moments that made me realise that there is always an image. You can always find an image. Thinking outside the box is very, very important. But don't go for the obvious. Always try and... Uh, Always try and look for something a bit more creative if you can. And don't be afraid to interact with people. If um, if you're honest and friendly and, and polite, people are always warm to you. Anyway, let's get back to the video. It's long enough as it is, but do check out F8 Magazine. It's a huge, huge support for the channel. And uh, thank you so much for everybody that's, uh, that's downloaded it so far. See you in a minute. Next up, we've got the Nifty 50. So we're talking about the 33mm 1.4 on the Fuji. Um, no, sorry, we're talking about the Nifty 50, 50 mil, but this is the 33 mil 1.4 on the Fuji, the new Weather Seal one. One of my favourite lenses ever made, absolutely fantastic. So, highly recommend this lens anyway. Now, for street photography, the 33 mil, the Nifty 50 is considered the classic, old school. I'd call this lens old school. Um, I don't understand quite why it was more popular with some of the old famous photographers, Henri Cotter, Bresson and all that, uh, used to use the thing. I think Sol Leiter did as well. I think he was a, th a 50 mil shooter. I find the, the 50 mil is a confident shooter's lens. For me, it's less forgiving. Right, it's, it's got less depth of field. For a start, as the biggest thing for the 50 mil for me is you're relying on your autofocus, your camera's autofocus. Um, if you're obsessed about background blur, you're going to be relying very heavily on your camera's autofocus consistency, continuous autofocus. Um, now, with, with even with the XT5, I just don't, I just don't trust it enough. So this puts me off this lens a little bit because you you can zone focus, but you'd have to go to f11. The same was f8 and be there, but I'd say f11 and then have three zones. You'd have two meters, five meters, infinity. Um, so. If you're going to zone focus, this probably isn't the lens I would recommend for that. But if you if there's ever a chance that you're going to do street portraits, or you want to pick out details, or do abstract, or um, just try and eliminate as much clutter as possible, this is the lens. This or the next lens, it would be the lens you want to start at because this lens helps you get rid of eliminate all the clutter and all the distractions from your scene. A 50 mil for me is. I always find that it, when I put the 50 mil on a lens and bring the camera up to my eye, it feels slightly zoomed in to, to the human eye. So it feels like I'm actually able to pick out details. Um, if you're confident enough to get close to things, this lens is really powerful. If you're looking for interactions or if you're looking for hand gestures, like if you've got a project that you wanna just pick out people smoking or mobile phones or whatever it is, this lens is really good for that. And obviously shooting at 1.4 or something really wide open and stupid like that, you're gonna get that background separation. You're gonna to start to get that isolation. It's fantastic in low light. Of all the lenses I've got on the table, this would probably be my number one lens for low light. Um, but yeah, you, you, it does take a lot more practice and I feel that it's difficult to master. So you, you would have to, I think you should definitely own a Nifty 50 if you're ever going to do events, any commercial events or anything like even a wedding. I would never dream going any event ever without a 50 mil, a decent, a very reliable 50 mil prime, a fast one, 1 1.4, that sort of thing. So it's extremely powerful lens. I just think it's harder to master, but you're, 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 one of the things that Bresson used to love it for because you, you, it was uh, perfect as far as vertical lines, that sort of thing. It was very, very uh, reflective of what the human eye sees. There was never a chance of any, uh, any slight distortion or anything like that, any perspective problems, which apparently there is with a 35, but it's very minimal. So this is the same distance. Um, now, again, this is where it comes into buying books and, and, and having a look to see what, what it is you want to photograph because it, if you're trying to get rid of distractions, you want to really, really minimal. Than I would do with a 35 mil. I don't know what it is. 
I just don't, I probably haven't given it enough enough practice. But if I'm doing an event, I'll always have the 35 mil on the camera more so than than this. So I've got far more practice with the 35 mil. So maybe that's maybe I'm not the best person to <laughs> to to endorse the 50 the 50 mil. But yeah, if there's any chance you've ever going out to do street photography portraits in 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 an environment, um, the nifty 50 is where you want to be for sure. Next up, the 85 mil, in this case, 56 mil for the Fuji. This is a 56 mil 1.2. This is the Mark II lens. And I'd call this the lazy shooter. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna back this up because if I get to a commercial event or a property that I've got a photograph or a wedding that's that's you know where they're getting ready shots, where they're getting ready shots at a wedding, most people can can sort of visualize that. You can get to a room which is complete chaos. There's so much going on. You've got to look for details. So the first thing I'll do is slap this on one of the cameras and I'll walk around looking for details. If I've got to try to do the same thing with any of these wide angles, it's going to be so much more difficult for me to get rid of the distractions and the clutter with a, with a 28 and a 35. Even with the 50, I just find that with an 85 mil field of view, firstly because you can put whack it at 1.2 and just get bokeh balls everywhere and just everybody loves a picture with bokeh balls in the background um, and that makes it very very easy to tidy up a scene same thing goes for street photography if you're out and you just want to eliminate if you're not in a very aesthetic city there's no layering opportunities there's no portraits opportunities or anything like that you can always find details with an 85 mil if you're an introvert and you don't have much confidence going around taking pictures and you're really worried about getting close to people or being spotted or it being obvious the 85 mil might be the the lens for you because it's just so easy to get rid of distractions especially having the 1.2 or 1.8 as it might be on your prime for your full frame it just enables you to eliminate everything you've obviously got no depth of field even at f4 you've got to be so if you're close enough to something at f4 you've got no depth of field it's it, I've got a mate, Matt Hall, 13 second, I'll put his work up for you. Do check out Matt Hall if you're in the area. Reach out for workshops because like Mark Fernley, Matt Hall is absolutely incredible. You'll learn so much with him. He shoots with this lens exclusively and from what I know, shoots everything at f16 because he wants as much depth of field as possible and he wants as much texture and, and layer into the image as possible. Now that's extremely difficult to do with this lens, which is, adds to the fact that he's super talented. But if you can master this vocal length and this and that idea of isolation, picking out details, uh, keeping things simple, uh, abstract perhaps, um, this lens is absolutely fantastic for that. The only thing I'd say about the Fuji lens is I really do not rate it for AFC. Um, I've got my Sony one for that. And then the reason I bought the Sony camera was just for this one lens. It's just not good enough for tracking for AFC, in my opinion. And that's even on the X-T5. But yeah, it, this might be the lens if you're an introvert. Um, the, the difference in bokeh f2 and f1.2 is, is less than you'd think. But it just seems more reliable at f2 and more usable um so that's about 2.8 on a full frame which is weird but i i really do like this lens at night i've not actually used it at night myself for street photography well yeah i have yeah i have i'll try and find some images um oh yeah there was one um and it's really really nice when you know that you can use texture or or the light and you create silhouettes um, and then just have those really, really nice street lights at night. It's really, really nice for that. And again, it just means you haven't got to get too close to people. So the 85 mil is extremely powerful. As I said, do check out Matt Hall, 13 second for inspiration using that lens. I will leave it there. I would, um, as I'd say, as a beginner, the 35 is where you want to be for sure. Um, it's just the everything lens. I think that is that is I think why the X100V camera is so popular is because that focal length just does everything. And obviously with this you can get the teleconverters and everything like that. But that focal length for me is my desert island lens, and I can do everything with it. Um, certainly for street photography, and it just makes you feel that you're not too far away from the action. You're not, you know. You're not pushing people away. You're not getting distortion. If you get remember, if you get too close to people with a 28 mil, you can make some really, really weird distortions in the corner of the, of the frame. So be that, be aware of that. Yeah, I hope that's been helpful. I hope the video has not been too long. 
Um, yeah, if you haven't already, do check out my magazine, F8, uh, my digital zine, which obviously F8 starts off with the process, the principle of F8 and be there, which is the, the principle with street photography using the 50 mil. So uh, just set your camera to F8 and infinity and or F8 and two meters. And that was the, pr the principle. Um, definitely F8 and be there works perfectly with the 35 mil and, and obviously more so with that one. But yeah, do check out my digital zine. It's a huge support for the channel. So if this helps you in any way, I uh, don't have any affiliated links or anything like that. So do check out my digital zine and um, that will be a huge support to the channel. Check out that um, video I mentioned as well earlier about the one one meter challenge. Use the hashtag F8 one meter and I'll keep an eye out for your, um, for your images. But no cheating, you've got to get close. And if you're going to do that, the 28 mil focal length, which of course, if you're using a kit lens, you can just leave it wide open on the kit lens there and uh, that is you sorted. So yeah, I hope that's been helpful for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.